Hi to YouTube. Uh, seen been watching a few videos on the different myths about calibers and uh, some of the stuff I believe and I don't believe. And this is all my personal opinion. Uh, if you have any, you know, if you like some of the videos I'm putting out, maybe you'll, you know, respect my opinion. I'm sure there'll be a lot of argument about everything I'm about to say. Uh, so there we have what I consider, and I mean I know there's other ones, but what I consider five of the most common defensive calibers on the market. Uh, from left to right, we've got 357 Magnum, 45 ACP, 357 Sig there in the middle, 9mm to the right of that, and the 380 on the right end. Uh, with the innovations of modern powders and modern bullets, you know, I, I see a lot of these guys that say, well, you need a 45 to, to stop somebody in one shot. No, you don't. Uh, one well-placed shot from just about any caliber, uh, right down to including 22 long rifle, could theoretically stop a human being from a, an attack. It would damn sure get their attention. Uh, on the other side of that, five or six piss poor place shots from a 45 or a 357 Magnum is not going to stop your opponent. Now, I'm a kind of a big fan of the bullet saturation theory of self-defense. Uh, if somebody has pushed me to the point where I now believe it's time to take out a weapon system and take their life, I am going to shoot and I'm going to shoot and I'm going to shoot until the threat stops and the, the bad guy's on the ground. I'm not interested if he's repairable, I'm not interested if he dies on impact, I just want him to stop threatening me or my family. Um, sorry, I got a garbage truck going by. No matter what caliber you pick, <clears throat> you have to understand that if you don't train with that caliber and with that weapon system, it doesn't matter what you're carrying. You can be carrying 50 BMG. If you don't know how to use it, it's kind of useless. Uh, so training is everything. Uh, caliber decisions are ultimately personal preference. Uh, I believe in a 9mm. I carry a 9mm on duty. Uh, with all the gun selections I have, that was my choice, was 9mm Glock. Um, my choice for a combat carry weapon system will always be a Glock. Uh, they work. Well, the fourth generation apparently they're having some issues with, but, you know. Third generation guns are all I have. Uh, I actually got a couple first generations. But, uh, you know, what I carry is third generation Glock. Uh, there are video after video after video after video of them taking a Glock out and beating on it and hammering on it and running it over or shooting a thousand rounds out of it or whatever they do. You don't see videos like that on other gu other guns. I mean, here and there you do. But typically the reason you don't see that is because they won't hold up to the torture. Uh, you know, I know people that torture test their own Glocks and still carry them same Glocks today. Uh, now maybe they're not running them over with the tank, but let's get realistic, isn't that a little bit extreme? Uh, and what are the odds of your gun getting run over by a tank uh, if you're just the everyday average Joe citizen out in the middle of you know, nowhere, Oklahoma, or wherever the hell you live? You know, these guys in Harkin Jerk and stand somewhere, sure, that's, that's an issue and that's something they need to consider. But running here around the United States, don't think there's a whole lot of problem with tank being attacked by tanks. Uh, at least I haven't seen it on CNN lately. Uh, I think one of the other things you have to consider is choices and choices of carry is the size of the gun you're going to carry. Now I'm constantly asked. Now I like my full frame Glocks. I like you know the 21, the 17, 22, uh, 31. Why don't when I go down to a small carry gun, like I carry that 357 SIG, why, or I'm sorry, that 357 Magnum revolver, that's uh, a Ruger LCR, why do I go to that 
as opposed to Glock 19 or a uh, you know, 26, the compact or subcontact versions. Primarily the reason I do it is <clears throat> when I drop down to that level weapon system, I am not strapping magazines to my waistband. Uh, I will throw a speed loader in my pocket or two, typically two, and go on. The reason that I, when I carry, you know, when I decide I'm going into a situation, you know, bad part of town, bad part of the city, wherever I'm going, or whatever, and I decide to strap a full frame gun on and I strap magazines on to go with it, that is with the, it, not intention, but the mindset that, you know, odds of getting into a gunfight go drastically up if I go to North Tulsa as they pose to where I live in my town. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I carry a gun every day, I carry a gun every moment of every day, uh, right up until the time I go to bed, and then it's laying there beside my nightstand. But, you know, it's law of averages to me, and the small town that I live in, I couldn't tell you the last time there was a shooting. Uh, well, actually, I can, it was an officer involved shooting, but, uh, you know, the last time there was a shooting on the street, or a rape on the street, or a murder on the street, or the last time any of that happened here, I, I honestly couldn't tell you one. It's not a daily occurrence. North Tulsa, it's a daily occur occurrence. North Tulsa, it's, you know, there's somebody killed in North Tulsa every day. There's a shooting or a stabbing every day in North Tulsa. <clears throat> so I gear up when I get in North Tulsa. Does that mean it can't happen here? Absolutely not. I'm not saying it doesn't. What I'm saying is, I can probably stop most of the threats that are going to, you know, present themselves here with five shots of 357. And if that don't get it, the next five will. And if that don't get it, the next five will. And if that don't get it, it just wasn't my day. But, uh, now ultimately that's what we need and that's what you're after. You're, you really need to, you know, pick a caliber that works for you. The little 380 guns, the only problem I have with those, they're not real easy to shoot. And for your average, you know, do I carry one? Sure. Or they're not extremely accurate. Much of, I mean, if somebody's going to tell me, yeah, I can shoot mine 100 yards. And if you can, that's wonderful. I'm not even going to sit here and argue with you. I'm sure there's somebody out there that can. But for your average Joe that's going to get to the range once every six months or once a year, those little 380s are not really a good solution. Uh, they're, they're just not, in my opinion. Uh, it is, you know, with that snubby 357, that wheel gun, I can engage targets, and I do, I do practice with that gun out to 50 yards. Now, would I try to take a snap headshot with that gun at 50 yards? Absolutely not. Would I take try and take a hostage res rescue whatever shot with that gun at 50 yards? Probably not. But again, now we're looking at extreme angles of the situation. You know, your average gunfight it happens in you know three to five seconds. It's three to five feet away, and there's three shots fired. Well, I can cover all those scenarios of the average gunfight with that 357 Magnum. Um, another nice part about that gun is you can load it down to 38 if you really want to. I don't, uh, but if you're a female and or small frame guy that's not getting a lot, a whole lot of practice with a uh, with 357 Magnum to learn how to mitigate that recoil, you know, 38 is an option. Uh, ultimately, the ballistics, you know, there, there's, I mean, there's differences between every caliber, but ultimately, ultimately, the ballistics between a 38 and a 9 millimeter are roughly the same. Uh, they're negligible. But uh, you know, that's just quick my take on calibers. I don't think there's much with modern hollow points and modern powder. I don't believe that there's much of a difference for anybody in any way over any of those calibers. Uh, I'll carry any of the above, I'll carry, you know, you know and not worry about it. Uh, a little footnote or side note or whatever you want to call it, I do see a lot of 22s coming to the concealed carry classes. Uh, that is one of the things that I am not a big proponent of. 22s for concealed carry just simply because, I mean, if that's what you got, you got to do with what you got. I mean, if that's all you can afford or all you can, you know, work up or all you can whatever, and don't get me wrong, I love 22s. 
I'm a big advocate of, you know, in a self-reliant situation, the 22 caliber, you know, 22 long rifle is very cheap, very inexpensive. You can carry a ton of it, and you can hunt just about any critter you're going to come across that you're looking for food with it. So don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing the 22. I, I have 22s. I love my 22s, and if you know the shit ever did hit the fan and I was headed to the woods, I'm taking a bunch of 22. So uh, you know it has its place. But in a concealed carry, uh, you know, life is on the line situation, I don't think that it really is a viable option. Uh, you probably ought to be looking for something else if that's all you got. But uh, anyway, that's my take on ammunition. Uh, you know, the basic roundabout recap of it is they all work. Uh, every bullet on that table has killed a human being, every bullet. I uh, put 22 long rifle up there and say the same thing. But with modern ammunition, modern bullets being, you know, engineered as, a, uh, as opposed to poured. You know, years and years ago they poured bullets. Uh, now, they're not so much pouring bullets as they're engineering bullets. You know, modern powders, they have burn rights down to the moment. They know exactly what speed that bullet's going to leave the barrel every time. So, find a gun that's comfortable for you. Train with it. Get out, put bullets down range. The only other thing I'm going to say before I sign off is uh, please don't buy, if you're shooting a 9mm, don't go to the store and buy that Winchester White Box 115 grain ball ammunition and train with it. And then load 147 round, you know, there's a black talon or 147 grain, you know, whatever you're buying, Winchester SXT or Remington Golden Sabres or, you know, whatever you're buying. Don't go and train with light loaded bulk, bulk ammunition and then load that other stuff up and carry it without, shoot, without taking it out and training with some of it. You need to know, you know, if you're going out and you're doing a thousand round to, rounds a day, yeah, absolutely, you're going to go buy cheap ammunition. But you need to practice with the high dollar stuff that you're going to buy and carry because different weight bullets, different grains of powder, you're going to have theoretically different bullet impacts. Some guns aren't, but you need to know. You need to know what your gun does. Not only that, but typically the felt recoil is a little bit stronger in those, you know, defensive ammunitions or plus P or plus P plus ammunition. So again, you need to go out and train with it. You need to know how your gun's going to react. You need to know how you're going to react to that gun with that heavy loaded ammunition. And most importantly, you're going to need to know the difference between bullet impact between training with 115 grain ball and carrying 147 grain self-defense level ammunition. But uh, I'm Mac, Double Tap Shooting. I appreciate you sitting through my video. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them behind. Uh, I'll, I answer every comment, uh, even the smart ass ones. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe. I try, trip, typically try to get out one or two videos a week. Uh, as the weather has broken, we're going to start getting out and doing a whole lot more bushcraft videos. I'm going to do some videotaping of some concealed carry classes and you know what I teach and how I teach. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching and be careful out there.